welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys to more build up coming up here between Barcelona and Bayern Munich in the quarter final of this year's Champions League and in today's video we're going to be looking so so closely at those battles that are going to take place out on the field head to head face to face we know that Barca we know that Bayern have some of the best players the footballing world has to offer but out there on the field, how is all that going to take shape? Who's going to come out on top? And for me, the key battles in today's video, they're going to go a long, long way to deciding who comes out on top in this mighty clash. Let's get to it. Kicking us off straight away, of course you knew this was coming. It is the battle here of the number ones for their respective teams, and in particular, the battle there between the two Germans. Germany's number one versus Germany's number two. It's Manuel Neuer against Marc-Andre Ter Stegen. And of course, we know now for several years, Neuer has been the chosen one for Germany. I think the two goalkeepers, they don't exactly see eye to eye. I don't think Neuer and Ter Stegen here are the best of friends because I think Ter Stegen truly believes he deserves that shot as the number one goalkeeper for the German national team. And I think over the past few seasons, Neuer, of course, has shown an extraordinary level. He's been at the top of his game now for such a long time. But now, it feels like Ter Stegen's time. Over the past few seasons, he's been growing and growing, not only there in terms of goalkeeping ability, but also in terms of stature. Now, he's a senior player in this team. He's a leader from the back, not just there in terms of the saves that he makes, the way that he bails us out of dangerous situations time and time again, but also in the way that when playing out from the back with the ball at his feet, he leads by example. The calmness he shows, the composure that he shows there inside his own area, and outside too, it really does transmit to the rest of that back four, and he's such a huge part now of this team. And I just think in a game like this, coming up against his German counterpart, coming up against the man who stands above him in the German national team, Ter Stegen, he's going to want to prove that point. He wants to prove that he's the best man for the job. And I think for me, this battle here, it's got everything. Because both keepers we know are top, top quality. They're both capable of making top, top saves at any given moment. They can win the game or save the game for their respective clubs. But who in this one will come out on top? Who will stand tallest? Ter Stegen or Manuel Neuer? Once again, we do travel into the midfield positions because we have here a battle between two centre midfield players, Frenkie de Jong, coming up against Bayern's Leon Goretzka. And I think this, again, it is going to be fascinating because I think not only is this an exciting tussle between two players who are very, very good in their quality, but also they're bang in form. Both players here arrive into this game having shown some really, really encouraging signs over the past few games or so. Because on one hand, you've got got Frank de Jong, who in the absence there against Napoli of Busquets and Arturo Vidal, we were heavily relying on de Jong to get us out of trouble. We were hoping there that he would come up big, come up strong with a big, big performance against Napoli. And you know what? He delivered. That's exactly what he did. He rose to the occasion. He was energetic. He was mobile there in that midfield area going forward defensively as well. He was doing everything, covering all of that ground in midfield. And that's exactly what we want to be seeing from Frank de Jong. And then, of course, there's Leon Goretzka, somebody who, incidentally, when he was leaving Schalke on a free transfer in 2018, he was actually heavily linked to Barcelona at the time. I remember making several videos about Goretzka when he was being linked to Barca, but eventually, of course, he did move to Bayern. And to be fair, it has taken him a bit of time to get going. I think originally he wasn't really breaking into that team. He wasn't really making himself a constant in that midfield, which, given the depth that Bayern have in that area, in some ways, that is understandable. But I think with Goretzka, you look at the quite unbelievable transformation pre-lockdown and post-lockdown and honestly it is incredible what he's done he's clearly gone away he's clearly realized you know what I've got to change something I have to do something completely different to make myself a real fixture in this Bayern team and he's gone and done it clearly he's worked incredibly hard he's piled on some muscle and he's come back into this team and he's been outstanding he has made himself a consistent figure now in Flick's midfield scoring goals from midfield providing assists, getting forward, being strong, being mobile, and I think Goretzka in this game, Barcelona are going to have to handle him, we're going to have to handle him there in terms of on the ball, off the ball, particularly with his late runs into the area, which can result in some big goals. 
And De Jong, he's going to be a big part not only of stopping him, but also hurting him going the other way too. We move now though to the top of the field and this was a battle that again you definitely saw coming. It is a battle that has gone on now for many, many years. At the very top European level it's Luis Suarez against Robert Lewandowski and it seems as though for so many years now it's been Suarez, it's been Lewandowski who've dominated that number nine role for their respective teams. They've been at the top of their game. They have been battling it out there as the best centre forward in the world for so many years and the question has always been who would you rather, Suarez or Lewandowski? Who's on the better form, Suarez or Lewandowski? And for many years, Suarez was unplayable. Suarez was unmatchable. You think back to 2015, the Champions League campaign that we had, where Suarez was just running through teams. He was tearing teams apart. PSG, Bayern Munich, whoever it was, whoever came in his way, Suarez was absolutely dealing with them. But of course, as that time has gone on, his game, sadly, and almost inevitably, it has regressed. He's 30. 33 years old now and I think we can all accept that Suarez's best days unfortunately are behind him and he can no longer be called the most feared centre forward in the world whereas Lewandowski well he still can because right now he's actually going through the best season of his career and even though it does seem as though there's a big big gap in terms of age between Suarez and Lewandowski there's actually not because Lewandowski himself is 31 years old they're just one and a half years between the two but right now Lewandowski this season has just been on another level entirely not just to Suarez but to any other centre forward in the world and he's a huge threat coming into this game the one thing though that I would say with regard to Lewandowski is that at this level, at this stage of the tournament, he can come under fire. He can come under some serious scrutiny when it really matters. Because in the group stage, in the league campaign, in the early knockout rounds, Lewandowski can score goals for fun. But this now, this is where Bayern need him to step up. He needs to do it on this kind of stage, in this kind of game. And the question will be, can Lewandowski now follow up all of that form and perform when it really, really matters. And for Suarez, can he somehow recapture some of that former glory, which we know at times he can still be capable of. It just comes less often now. But can this game be one of those that he just pulls it out the bag? Last but certainly not least though, in the key battles, this one for me, it's the best battle of all. This is the best combination out there on the field that you're likely to see because honestly, it's got everything. Lionel Messi up against Alfonso Davies. It is a brilliant, brilliant head-to-head -head battle out there on the field because on the one hand, you've got Alfonso Davies, a lightning winger who's now turned himself into a left-back at Bayern throughout the season. He's been moulded there into a more defensive-minded player. But of course, he's one of those fullbacks who never plays looking behind him. He's going forward. He's bombing on all of the time. And right now for me, he's such an exciting player to watch. One of the most exciting young players in the entire world of football. And he's just brilliant to watch. He's one of those players that you sit down and it's just so enjoyable to watch the runs that he makes, to watch the energy that he has, to see the pace out there, the sheer pace that he can just get up the field with, with absolute ease. And also going the other way too, that pace can really help him out defensively. And believe me, He's going to need that. He is going to need something to help him stop Messi. Because there's every chance that he could undergo the biggest test. By far the biggest test he will have faced in his career on Saturday night when Messi may just drift a little bit further wide. Because we all know Alfonso Davies, like I say, he loves to get forward. Messi will know that himself. He may have to do a little bit of work defensively. But he'll also know there may be there some space to pick up on. And I think we're going to see a really intriguing battle just start to take shape there, whereby Messi is going to test Davies. Is he ready to be a fullback at the very, very top level? Defensively, has he got what it takes to play in this Bayern team from a defensive standpoint? Messi will try and bring out any error, any weakness in his game, and it's going to be an absolutely brilliant encounter. So those right there, guys, are some of the key battles that personally I am very, very excited about seeing ahead of Saturday's game. But of course, I want to know your thoughts. What do you make there at the head-to-head -head battle? Not just there between the two teams, but also individually. What combinations are you really looking forward to seeing ahead of this game? 
please do let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, let me know as well on my selections and who just might come out on top. I will of course see you very, very soon indeed with so much more build up to come. We're only just getting started here on the channel. Don't forget to check out More Talk FCB2 with all the content and all the build up you will ever need. I will see you then for plenty more to come. Thanks for watching, guys. But until next time, as always, Vishka Elbrasa. Oh, no.